Shepard Chevy celebrating 30 years of great service. And for me, I like to keep it simple. Limit this to something someone said, not something someone did. We start in Springfield with Mr. Burns on who you're crapping on the score. At one point in last night's debate, tiring your frequent mentions of Arizona Senator John McCain by Senator John Kerry, you, George W. Bush, reminded us that McCain is supporting you, albeit half-heartedly, I might add. I might also add how you made prominent mention of the late former Democratic Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan of New York, one of the true lions of liberal causes, and someone who had little kind to say about you, about the two years of your presidency that he was actually around for. Mention that he and FDR are bristling in their graves, at your evoking of their names, as I'm sure Genghis Khan is furious that I'm allowing democracy to fester rather than leading my armies in bloody triumph over my enemies. And for the last time, does anyone in your campaign realize that those W is for women signs we seem to see everywhere means that your name is George Women Bush? Being a Republican, it pains me to say it, but President George Walker, Kennebunkport, Haywood, Ace, Esther, Ren, Stimpy, Scooby-Doo, Bush, who are you crapping? Ren. Ren, ren, ren. Oshkosh Henry, sit back, relax, and strap it down for this one. <clears throat> Says, this crap goes out to nausea-inducing celebrity sycophant Katie Couric. I've never been much Your for girl. morning television news programs, but since the events of September 11th, I've made a practice of checking the news on TV each morning just to determine whether or not the apocalypse has commenced. On Monday, I tuned the Today Show just in time to hear Ms. Couric somberly proclaim that this was a sad morning. She eventually turned to news hottie Natalie Morales and said, What a sad day. What horrific event was she referring to? The death of B actor Christopher Reeve, of course. Now, I appreciate that Katie was probably friends with Christopher Reeve, but how about a modicum of professionalism? To a detached outsider, Christopher Reeve's death was the result of his careless pursuit of an activity only associated with the idle rich. After all, he wasn't wearing a helmet while engaging in equestrian leisure, hardly a death in the pursuit of the greater good. Most mornings, Katie announces that several are dead in Iraq, or thousands are homeless and dead as the result of some force majeure, before cheerfully turning to her Wonder Bread co-host to announce that later in the show, she'll have a trenchant interview with some acting hack like Courtney Thorne Smith. <laughs> I guess the deaths she reports most mornings are not significant enough to warrant the proclamation that it is a sad day. Katie, keep some perspective, exercise some journalistic integrity, and continue to worry about how cavernous your aging face looks like through the truth-seeking device that is HDTV. Katie Couric, who you crap it? Who wrote that? Oshkosh Henry. I'm marrying him. <laughs> that is... That, that, let me say, that's my soulmate. There's my soulmate. At least somebody else agrees with me on Christopher Reeve. Well done. I think there's been a lot worse news than that lately, don't you? The Christopher Reeve? There's, there's people getting blown up yeah. every day in Iraq. Yes. Blown up. Yes. I agree. I don't really have time for that. D. Jeff and Hobart, you're on the score. Joe Paterno, Jimmy Pearsall. Too dafty. <laughs> <laughs> They're daft! And Terry, I know what you're talking about with Joe Paterno impersonating Kyle Barton. That was at a pep rally. Mm-hmm. But he's he's 80 years old and he's he's lost his mind. He really has. I'm serious. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, my friend. All right. Mike Rapp goes out to Mike North, who on Tuesday show, the Mike North morning show, my dad, was talking to uh, Fred and his and Ann about how Detroit was going to add an African town. And Mike was commenting about how it's pretty much an oxymoron considering that Detroit city limits is majority black. He's like, well, isn't that like Hiroshima adding a Japanese town? I bet you Bruce, uh, I bet you Wendell Kim has a summer home there. Well, considering Wendell Kim is Korean, it'd be kind of hard to do that. So Mike North, Pudwack, who are you crapping? Superfan Anthony says, Yesterday, Dan Bernstein mentioned the bony plate that covers a shark's eyes when it feeds. I believe you are referring to the nictitating membrane. It is not a bony plate. It is a fold of the mucous membrane or a flap of extra skin. Nictitating membranes are not only found in sharks, but also in cats, dogs, birds, reptiles, and even human beings. And humans 
It's the seemingly useless pink lump that can sometimes be seen in the inner corner of the eye. Although your reference was in the right place, and your facts were incorrect, the bony plate is actually made up of mucus or skin. From this 23-year-old nerd who's watched too much Discovery Channel and played too much Trivial Pursuit comes the question, Dan Bernstein, who you crap it? Can I add another uh, candidate for the useless pink lump? Dan Zempilo. <laughs> <laughs> Is there room for another candidate on the slate? <laughs> Gary and Evanston, you're on who you crap it on the score. Oh, hi, Terry and Dan. Hi, I, Gary. I am not a NASCAR, a NASCAR fan, but I have to crap Christine Brennan for her incredibly idiotic USA Today column last Thursday in which she gleefully praised NASCAR's punishment of Dale Earnhardt Jr. for swearing on TV and wrote that quote, Penalizing Jr. isn't only proper, it's a brilliant move to potentially increase NASCAR's fan base. What? Punishing Jr. isn't going to bring any new fans to NASCAR, and the punishment itself was way too severe. But then again, this is the same Christine Brennan who declared that Annika Sorenstein missing the cut at a men's tournament last year was a great victory for women. Christine Brennan, who were you crapping then, and who are you crapping now? That's my guy! You're crapping now! Oh. Comrade Karpinov in Sycamore says, Last night, Captain Retardo Tim McCarver offered the following thought. When commenting on the number of different signs Red Sox catcher Jason Veritek was giving Pedro, McCarver asserted that the Boston backstop was flashing more signals than an aircraft carrier on a rough sea. Uh-oh. Apparently that prattling half-wit has yet to read about the marvelous advance in technology known as radio communication, of which the U.S. Navy makes rather extensive use. I feel safe in suggesting that I would not be the only one who would enjoy watching McCarver strap on the catcher's gear and cop in a squat in the middle of the USS George Washington's flight deck during aircraft recovery. So, Tim McCarver, as tons of steel is hurtling toward you at 500 miles an hour, ask yourself, am I wearing my lucky jock, and who are you crapping? Prattling halfwit. <laughs> I like it. Prattling halfwit. Very, there very good. Today. Yes, Raider very boy good, Gino yeah. in display, and you're on who you're crapping on the score. Hi, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hey. First of all, a Rick Tellender show. Two Uncle Teabaggy. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Uh, anyway, my crap goes out to Steve Psycho Lions. On Monday night's Braves Astros game, he delivered this gem about the late Ken Caminiti. On the field and off, he lived life full throttle. Steve, you're romanticizing Caminiti's troubled life of steroids, jail time, and crack cocaine as if he were Tony Hawk or something. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Caminiti, among dead sluggers, he's Babe Ruth with a fox attitude. Psycho, your first and last profound statement was when you dropped trial standing on first base. Who are you crapping? <sighs> Hooked on Bifonic says, before Christopher Reeve's body was cold, Senator John Edwards stated... When John Kerry is president, people like Christopher Reeve are going to walk, get up out of that wheelchair, and walk again. Oh, you didn't say that. Well, lawsuit boy, stem cell research is just what it says. Research, it may take oh. decades, if ever, for anything of fruition to take place. To imply that people with spinal cord injuries are going to jump out of their wheelchairs and do a thigh-slapping dance to turkey in the straw <laughs> is an insult to Christopher Reeve and the other thousands of people afflicted with this disability. <laughs> They have a better chance of walking by having Jimmy oh. Swagger, Ernest Angley, or Jim Baker tearfully shouting, Heal! <laughs> and anything that you or that Fred Gwynn lookalike from Massachusetts can drum up. Wise up, Slick. You're talking to a hand-picked jury at Tar Heel Nimrods, ready to give you a 30% cut of a multi-million dollar settlement. You're treading on the hopes of people with serious life-threatening injuries. John Edwards, who you crapping? Love it. Boy, oh, they're good today. Man, this is Strong. great. Strong. Carphone Tim, you're on Sports Radio 670. Hey, buddy. Hi, buddy. All right, this crap goes to the most trusted Canadian in America, Peter Jennings, who referred to John Kerry as President Kerry as last night's debate ended. Now, I listen to this show, so I might be a bit daft, but I feel I would have noticed an election in which the incumbent is replaced by his opponent. Plus, if the election's over, why did I just watch two knuckleheads yammer on about tax cuts for an hour and a half? Peter Jennings, take the hockey skate out of your mouth and ask, who you crapping, eh? This is from Don Quixote, who says, Sinclair Broadcast Group Incorporated has ordered most of its 62 stations to showcase a film next week called Stolen Honor, Wounds That Never Heal. 
Many of the stations, which serve nearly one-fourth of the nation's homes with TV, are in swing states, including Ohio and Florida. It's a made-for-TV version of the literature classic Unfit for Command by those Swift Boat people. And there's absolutely no reason to think that this is a creation of the liberal media. The TV Guy Award winner Carlton Sherwood said, I did this as a journalist for all the purest reasons. There was no political money, and I did not engage anyone in the campaign. This is as clean as it gets. Sinclair's Vice President Mark Hyman said, This is news. It is what it is. He's got that right. Dig a little deeper. Carlton Sherwood and Mark Hyman, who you crapping? In Buffalo Grove. What are you, an owl? <laughs> Terry, all of a sudden, it's a barn owl. It's Tad Turdlike on the score. Tad Turdlike, where you been? <laughs> Tad Turdlike here. When I'm not giving the weather report or the traffic update, I do uh, dabble in motivational speaking. So it did catch my ear last week when you had the Samurai Seymour on the score. And I had to listen to you too. Uh, slurp him up and down, tell him what a great political speaker he was. Funny, because my band of uh, merry motivational speakers about four years ago came into town, uh, Stephen Covey, Zig Ziglar, and myself. And I do specifically recall you two telling uh, your listening audience that you, that the listening audience would be a bunch of uh, dopes and losers for mm -hmm. listening to such babble and crap. We stand yes. by it, yes. <laughs> we stand by so it. So therefore, Dan and Terry, after giving uh, Samurai Seymour the big slurping high five, who you crap in? Okay, DJ, it's one of those moments, but just take it. I can say we stand by it, can't we? Hardware Mike mm -hmm. says, They had a debate last night in Arizona, and I watched it all. There was John Kerry discussing fiscal responsibility while explaining how he's going to give health care to every poor American. There was George Bush claiming to understand that there is indeed a mainstream in American politics while speaking of an army of compassion. In an attempt to court the other's undecided voters, each of the candidates has softened his position on issues to the point of homogenization. As I sat and watched these two dopes, I decided there really isn't much difference between them at all. Quite exactly. These two 50-something Yale grads, both wealthy, both white, both wearing the exact same blue suit, white shirt, and red power tie, are trying to get some separation. Instead, I see them merging into what I call one big super dope. However, I will point out that Kerry had fewer little dots on his tie. In short, they're more similar than different. So John Kerry and George Bush were trying to fool us all. I ask you, who you crap it? Also wearing Smurf underpants. <laughs> Michigan Matt in Indianapolis. You're on who you crap it on the score. Christopher Reeve to equity. <laughs> God, man. Okay, all right. All right. All right. This clap goes out to Supreme Blowhole J. Mariotti. On Tuesdays around the horn, when comparing Yankee fans to Cardinal fans, he said that Cardinal fans were sane. J. This is the same group that absolutely loses it when the pet of the peanut vendor in left field dies. God knows what's going to happen to Cardinal Nation when Stan Usual passes away. Hell, they're probably going to have a meltdown when Al Horoboski dies. Jay Mariotti, here's hoping you get a beatdown from Woody Page and Rusty from Stickney. Jay Mariotti, you're high. Shut up. Who you crapping? <laughs> Who are you crap with? It's 144 Chicago Sports Radio 670 to score. I'm not kidding you. Three or four trips. 312 644 67 67. Still plenty of time. We're elongating today. LeBron James' Hummers on who you crapping on the score. Mmm, I have a case for CSI Mokina. Someone stole a spinning bucket out the back of my navigator. <laughs> 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 I'll have that looked into. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> uh, today's crap is for the scores pantsless hockey expert and and tonight uh, this week's fill-in host for Mike Murphy, Jesse Rogers. During Tuesday night's show, Jesse said the following: Wow, with me filling in for Murph, now I know how Jay Leno felt when he filled in for Johnny Carson. Jesse, comparing your no talent ass to Leno, I can live with that. But comparing that walking mustachioed douchebag, Mike Murphy, to the comic innovator and TV legend, Johnny Carson, that just qualifies you to be the first murder victim on CSI Mokina. If you're going to compare Murph to a late night talk show host, low rent hacks like Pat Sajak, Alan Thicke, and Magic Johnson would be more like it. Jesse, why don't you stick to what you know? 
And when you figure out what that is, let me know. <laughs> Jesse, you bald hockey puck cranium dumbass, who you crapping? I think you just killed Matabata Cola there, Hummer. You killed our producer. She's going to have to marry him, too. Bongo Berry. No room for everybody. Last Sunday, <laughs> during the Rams Seahawks game, Brian Baldinger of Fox observed that Mark Bulger has been razor hot in the fourth quarter. That's somehow related to Fire Sharp? <laughs> Ryan Baldinger. Who you crap? Hey, we got the big, big crew Sunday. Oak Park Joe, you're on who you crapping there. on the score. Guys, this has been three and a half hours of awesome radio. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, man. And by the way, I'm majoring in radio at Columbia, so hopefully one day I'll get to be a mouth-breathing intern, too. Hey, hey, hey. call Zampillo. Call, us, call <laughs> Zampillo, speaking of mouth Call him. We'll hire you tomorrow if you call him. I mean, if you go through all the paperwork. <laughs> my crap is for, and it's a little bit late, my crap is for caller Simon, who last week called in and gave Bernstein a hard time for, quote, not letting black callers speak, notwithstanding the fact that Bernstein didn't even cut Simon off when he blathered for nearly five minutes minutes like a raving idiot. I've been a listener for the past three and a half years, and in that time I've heard callers Myron, Jack H. Mitch, Stan from Bellwood, Northside Pimp, Beecher Row, and Coco Puff all contribute regularly to the Bernstein and Boar show. The shocking similarity with those callers is that they all knew how to formulate a thought before calling in. So Simon, come on, dude, who you crapping? Get that kid's number. Seriously, not just for that. He's, he couldn't be more right about that. But, I mean, get that kid's number. If he wants to be an intern, I'll hire him. i got that kind of power. And then in a week, I'll go in and say, he's a crap. No, I won't. <laughs> we wish you a bloody time for you. 312 67 67 All right, we've extended who you're crabbing because it's been so damn good. We've got time for a couple more. 312 67 67 Northside Tim is welcome to WSCR, the score. Hey, hey, who's been talking about my mustache? Leave me alone. What's happening, Cat Daddy? What's up, Tim? <laughs> What's happening? I'll get to come to my boy Merce defense. Yeah, right. I got some crap for John Kerry. I got a plan. I got a plan. Yeah, so do I. It's called laser eye surgery, you cock out bastard. Who you cracking? <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that's not Northside Tim. That's <laughs> Northside North Pim. Big difference. Well, not really. Tony in Round Lake Beach says this is for the score's very own cuddly Doug Buffone. While commenting on the Houston Astros' amazing season-ending tear, Doug said the Astros just started to hit the hell out of the ball. All of them. Bagwell, Biggio, Berkman, you know, the bee killers. <laughs> Doug. Does this mean the next time Houston plays, there's four guys storming out of the field wearing white overalls and white Panama hats with black mesh netting attached to the brims? And will they be swinging fly swatters and fumigators at the plate? Dearest Uncle Teabag, though this traditionally is the time of year for annoying yellow jacket nuisance, it appears that one has crawled through the treacherous forest of your ear hair and is constantly buzzing inside your skull. Doug Buffone, it's killer bees. Who you crapping? It's Yuli's gold. <laughs> A portly Pete Sack says this underage crap is for Chicago's own Peabody Award winner, R. Kelly. During the interview on Primetime Live last Thursday... Did you see it by any chance? He attempted to gain some sympathy oh. despite facing several child pornography oh. charges by making a distinction between the music persona he portrays and the real Robert Kelly. Yep. Likening his transformation from humble Southside singer to international megastar by claiming it was like when Peter Pan got bit by the spider. What? Did I miss that chapter? I doubt it, but maybe you were too busy prowling the local high school, so I'll help you out. It was Peter Parker who was bitten by a spider, not Peter Pan. So R. Kelly, my least favorite friendly neighborhood molester, it's not who are you peeing on today, but rather who are you crapping. The only di and remember this differentiation in the future. One of them's what you keep under the bed. I'm going to tell you something. Did you see that thing? No. You just want... Uh, again, I need that pill that makes me an imbecile. I may have already taken it. You need the, the blue pill? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. To so just go back to the Matrix where everything is right and you don't have to go down the, the rabbit hole? It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I torture myself. This, I like to. This apparently. has been a, a stellar oh, edition of Kids, you yep. So, Terry, please check your men out. Go! Oh. Let, me, let me put aside my anger and my angst and my thing. Yes, my manometer is ready to burst. And did you know where I got it? Mantana. 
<laughs> Idaho. <laughs> Strangely enough, here to close us out, Mike <laughs> on the south side is on the score. Hey, guys. Hey, Mike. Mike. This one goes out to Steve Olkin. On his 120 update, he said, Pete Monroe will make his first postseason debut tonight. <laughs> Well, you cannot make your first postseason debut. You can make your debut or you can make your first appearance in the postseason. It's like saying, Ken Caminiti died again today. <laughs> this fits right in with usual score up update, guys. We're constantly butchering the English language. So, Steve Olkin, who are you crap? Well, the hooded mask will get the seat you out. I'm going to re-hood him tomorrow. We're going to hood him. Hey, buddy. If we were napping. Oh, he's got it.